thank you for showing up this early morning. Uh, my name is Eric from Rockland. Uh, I'm going to have a very short talk, 20 minutes, and if it's longer, these people will stop me. Um, and it's um, about a very small pseudo-scientific, it's small science, no, it's, it's fun science, it's not, not difficult. Um, and I got this idea of, of taking a look at something that we do every day. We place points on outlines, we look at shapes, and then we, we somehow uh, knit these, these Bezier paths together with curved points and on curved points, off curved points, different contours, widths, all that stuff. I mean, we all do this, right? Who draws Beziers? Right, the quadratics? <laughs> Alright, I see. No, okay, there you go. <laughs> so this is, this is something we do. Uh, everybody is, is involved with this. And it's not because we're dealing with contours and Bezier's and it's, it's math drawing these, these curves, we somehow think that it's mathematical, therefore it has to be exact. But, um, as we all know, it's not really so exact, and it's not really so mathematical. I, uh, I devised a little experiment um, as a main goal, basically, because I wanted to find out what it is to run a small experiment. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a, a meta experiment. I'm just trying to see what you need to do and how you get people involved and how you collect your data and all of that stuff. So here it is. A, um, a small cat long N from a uh, particular uh, Johan Enslay specimen. Um, scanned by Dave Foster, and I changed the file name, so I forgot which particular point size it was. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't really matter. It's an N, and it's kind of rough. Um, it's been scanned, it's kind of small, and notice that there's, there's your, your dirt and your little doohickeys, and uh, it's, it's stuff we look at. You see the paper? Alright, I could have taken any letter. Uh, why did I take this one? Because, I don't know, because it was available. So I send this one bitmap, this one file, to all of my students and all of my friends, and uh, a bunch of you who, who got my mail, who already did one. Okay, the rest of you, uh, you need to you need to see me after the talk. <laughs> so so far, I sent this mail. I said, here's here's an N, here's a picture. Digitize this as you would with any other letter, any other uh, any other project that you do. Just just put your bezier's around it in, in as, as good as you can. And of course, this is rather limited because it doesn't say there's, there's no context, there's no there's no widths, there's no other type. Um, so it's it's very limited, but it means that I can focus very specifically on the numbers of the uh, of the data that comes in. And here's a little close up. Uh, this is not a map of stars. Uh, this is a rather nebulous detail. The, the red dots are on curve points. The orange dots, the small ones, are off curves. Uh, the blue ones are occasional start points. And uh, these are the results of my experiment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's a little bit more. So, this is the raw stuff that comes in. Awesome. And these are the outlines basically showing the same thing. So, this already tells us a couple of things. Um, a lot of people like uh, Robofont, and a lot of people just left the uh, standard X side at 500 units. Alright, so that's kind of the final news. Um, you can tell because it's drawn it's, it's, uh, with the origin on the bottom left. So the stems kind of still match on the left, but the, st the stems on the right are, are all over the place. And if you look at the top right, it's all over the place. Um, and these other ones are superimposed. Well, kind of, it kind of works, but you have to keep in mind that um, because there it was only one letter, it was only a request to make one letter. So a lot of people just did not uh, look at the metrics. They just take, did not change the margins to make it look uh, like anything else. But there wasn't really that much context. So. Horizontally, the coordinates don't really don't mean much. Um, vertically, they don't really mean much either. People really like the baseline. That was easy to find. Look, <laughs> that's the one, the one landmark. So, yes, I know where that is. Uh, and then the rest, you know, the, the, the X height is just you know, nebulous. Um, I got a whole bunch of these. I didn't single out these people for any particular reason, but uh, just to show you know, how um, I've been using RoboFonts and Python to visualize this data. So, all the stuff you see, all the graphs, it's all automatic. There's this code. I drop in a UFO and it just processes everything and updates everything. And they're all different. So all these, all these point structures are like signatures, they're like fingerprints. Um, and so far, with uh, uh, 90 results, I have not had a single matching point structure. Of course, now that you know, you can send one in and you can game it and say, well, look, all of a sudden, accidentally, we have two of the same. I know, but I know that this data that I have collected now, people didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and from now on, if I find duplicates, I can ask you about it. 
But and there's, there's this. So there's skinnier ones, and there's heavier ones, there's ones with rounded series and straight series, and uh, whether or not this little place, this intersection is going to be sharp, or they're going to have separate uh, uh, outlines. There's, there's so much difference. I was amazed by it. So, now it's numbers, and I want to do some math on it. Um, how do you compare this? Um, well, of course, you can say, well, you know, I'll just measure the stems. But where? What? How? What height? Most of these stems are curves. Do I then take the center of the curve? The center of the curve of this letter is not the center of the curve in that letter. That means I have to interpret. I have to then make decisions about what I won't be measuring and what I won't be measuring. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to find a method that did not require my interpretation. I did not want to put uh, an x-height somewhere or do something with the weights. I didn't want to depend on landmarks, uh, meaning very specific details and say, well, this is the top of the curve or this is the top of the serif. Some of the serifs are really nice and angular. Some of the serifs are really round. I don't want to go in there and say, no, this is where the x-height is. So I needed to find a method that was completely independent of me, because also I'm lazy. I don't do measurements. I want to drop it somewhere and have uh, exact code do it. So I also wanted it to process bitmaps as well as outlines. Uh, here's another big, big plus of the colors are a bit off, but. Uh, are these just awesome? This is all the same, the same letter. Um, there's the top. So, I found a way uh, by actually uh, um, figuring it out and, and coming up with measuring stuff and then, and then coming up with a formula and then when all of that was done, I found out, of course, it was done already. Uh, these, these are the best ones because then I understood what was done. Uh, it's called Procrustes Analysis. Um, this is a mathematical or statistical method named after a Greek bandit named Procrustes who would uh, take people hostage and drag them back to his lair and if they were larger than his bed he would cut off their limbs and if they were shorter than his bed he would stretch them out. <laughs> a little gruesome. Okay, so this is what happens with the, uh, with the shape. Uh, Procrustes analysis is a method of taking the scale out and taking the, the, the offset and the rotation out of a shape, uh, out of different shapes, they all have the same scale and the same rotation and the same offset. And you do this by scaling to the same surface area. Awesome. So, there's a little movie. Oh, it's very, very dark. Oh, that's unfortunate. But you can see it's an interpolation between the, na the 90 different uh, uh, shapes. And on one side, this is the raw stuff, and on the other side, this is how it ends up after the analysis, so after taking the scale and the... Um, can you see this? Yeah. yeah. So I thought it was pretty convincing. I was, I was um, encouraged to go on. So this, this is now how the outlines look when you overlap them and you take the scale and the offset out. So this is with... Uh, you, you can tell the, the, the baseline dots, the origins, are now scattered all over the place. Um, the baseline is much fuzzier than it was before, but the... Um, uh, the, 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 the letters are now much uh, more even spread out, so it's a bit looser at the bottom, but the top, the top right, uh, is now very much on, on place. So this is this shows us a couple of interesting things. You get close, uh, something like the connection between the stem and the curve is all over the place. Now it, it extends from down here to up there to up here. This is all all these points are different solutions that people come up with to make this stem go into the round. So that means that there's absolutely no uh, uh, predictable way in which people will do this. Right? And they're all good if you look at them, they're all fine. So there's, there's not one particular solution. Um, I wanted it to work with outlines as well as bitmaps. So here the, uh, the original scan has been positioned the same way as the outlines. You can see it matches nicely. Um, Okay, here we can see a couple of interesting things. The uh, the top, now the top of the curve, everybody can find that. So <laughs> all of the letters, all of the outlines, all of the, all of the entries, all the examples are within this small cluster at the top. Great. So that has now become a measure of how precise you want it to be. There's there's sort of a, you know, a radius that you can you can measure there. Uh, the inside curve, that thing, is already not so sure. Could be, could be this, this is part of that, that's part of that. This is, 
also a still part of that. This is sort of a 45 degree, and then you get into the area where, where the, the curve goes into the stem. That's also very difficult to find. People have trouble coming up with one location. I guess that, that means there isn't a single location for it. So that shows you the one landmark that everybody agrees about. This shows you big areas of you know, suburbs where anything can happen. And stuff like this, people draw it with a little straight edge, people draw it with a little curve, uh, uh, two little bits, one point. Uh, it's, there's so many different solutions here. There. Now, nice to know that after progressive analysis, there still is not a single point that matches between any of the entries. So there isn't a single coordinate that matches with the other ones. I think, you know, I still need to find ways of, of looking at that, but even though the off curves are so tight, the off curves are really spread out. Um, if you put them all on one stack, and then you make little intersections, and then you get the, uh, the mean, uh, you draw a line between them, you get a fairly good rendering of it, so maybe this is going to be a method of doing some uh, auto-tracing, I know, I'm sure that's how it works, but it's so much nicer if you make it yourself. All right, so, conclusions. Um, as this is not really a scientific project, these are not really scientific conclusions, but I think progressives can be a nice method to compare the glyph data because you can take the scale and the offset out, and you can actually look at the, the shape. This shows that path construction is absolutely unique and absolutely human, so everybody will do this differently. Even though it's numbers and it's math, you know, it is an expression of, of uh, a human interpretation, a human uh, thought. Um, another thing is that how closely these different solutions match yes. is not spread out evenly through the uh, design. So at some points it will be really close, other points the same letters will be all over the place. Which means that it's interesting, if you're comparing two different fonts, and you know, some of them happen to have letters that are very similar, and some of them happen to have uh, coordinates that are very similar, you can now look at it and say, well, this whole talk then builds up to this one sentence, it says, well, I now know how unlikely it is that these outlines came to be uh, independently from each other. Which means that you can sort of take the next step and say, hmm, I wonder how these coordinates in this letter match the coordinates in that letter, because that's going to be incredibly unlikely. And now we know how much, how unlikely. So, round it all up. Um, if you have any experience in statistics, and you have some free time, and you would like to help out, I have some questions for you. Uh, if you're really good in drawing outlines, and you haven't collaborated, you haven't sent one in yet, uh, please go to letter.com, digitization hyphen experiment, and if it's too long, just send me a letter at eric at letter.com, and I will send you this link. Uh, uh, take that little image, and digitize it, and send me the UFO, <coughs> and you'll become part of this little experiment. And um, are there any questions? That was it. Thank you.